It's time to liberate the LCD. I'm removing the LCD for a few reasons. I want to have more space to add more devices, so I'm going to need the breadboard real estate. I need more space and more tie strips to be able to do what I want to do. The LCD also doesn't allow for enough presentation of information while doing my projects. I only have so much room on the LCD to be able to show what I need to show. And the LCD is mainly used for a display for the end user of the final device anyway. It's not really meant to be used as a debugging device, although it works for that. But my biggest reason that I want to remove the LCD now is that the circuits that I add to the breadboard, I want to make them as simple as possible for the beginner. My whole approach in teaching and learning myself is to work with the simplest and most minimal circuits as possible. So now we have all of this free area, breadboard real estate to use for future projects. And I'm not really too keen on these wires hanging around on this location of the breadboard. This was created because we needed space for the breadboard on this area for the LCD. So I'm gonna add the wire connections back from this power rail to this power rail like I had it before the LCD was installed. And I'm gonna remove these wires so I can clean up this, this top area here. And we'll be back to a very basic and simple circuit. Remove the two wires, pins 64 and 63, to the unconnected power rails. And now connect the two remaining power rails together. The circuit should now look like this. Pin number one, which is a positive power connection, should be connected to the positive rail. The analog to digital converter power should be connected to the power rails. The other power connections, 31 and 32, should be connected to the power rails. And 64 and 63 should be connected to the power rails. All the power rails are connected together from this portion. This breadboard is connected to this breadboard's power rails using these two wires. The power on this part of the board is being provided by this power rail. And then this power rail is connected to the remaining breadboard with these two wires. So now all of the power rails have power going to them and the entire board can be powered. The main power, of course, is coming from the ST-Link going to these two main power connectors. Since we don't have the LCD to show information anymore, we're going to need to find a resource that will allow us to view the variables within the program that we send to the microcontroller. The resource that we're going to use is the STM Studio. The STM Studio is a program that allows you to view the variables, variables that you select in your program. You'll need to go to st.com forward slash en forward slash development tools forward slash STM Studio STM32 HTML. And it'll give you a lot of information about it, uh, PDF files. And I do encourage reading these, but I will probably go through all of the features of this program as I use them. So you can just get the software here and make sure that you register. Go ahead and open this file and run the STM Studio setup. It's gonna ask you if you have the JRE, Java Runtime Environment installed. The Java Runtime Environment simply provides you with the ability to run programs created in Java. And I've already installed it myself. But in this process, it's going to take you to the JRE download page, the Java Runtime Environment download page. And just make sure that you download the latest JRE, which is right here on this page. You can go to it manually if you want to, just by Googling JRE download. And depending on your system, I my system is Windows uh, 64. I just ran this particular file, let it go through the process, and then you can continue the download of the STM Studio. When you've finished installing the STM Studio, you'll be presented with a screen that looks similar to this, where you have a variable viewer here, and you're gonna have the variables listed in this location, and you have the option of how you want to receive the information from the microcontroller using JTAG, the SW, DIO, the SWIM, and the ST-Link. The ones that I'm gonna be using, or the one that I'll be using, is the ST-Link SWD. I'm not gonna get into this program in any depth right now because as I do the projects, I'll show you how to use this program. And in this video, we will start with a quick example of the ADC, the analog to digital converter and the potentiometer like we did before. 
and we will monitor the data register of the ADC using this program here. So let's go ahead and set up the circuit for the ADC, the potentiometer, on port A on one of those pins, one of the port A pins, like, a, like we did before. Add a potentiometer to pin number 15, and I'm adding 330 ohm resistors to each high and low leg of the potentiometer to provide a little bit of protection for the pin on the microcontroller. Okay, I'm starting with some skeleton code here, an empty project. Make sure that when you create your project, you'll have the adc.h in that project. Okay, let's put in the include files. This is our standard include. Include the adc.h file. So let's initialize the adc. And we're gonna set it up as the interrupt mode. And the channel we're using is channel number one. And to get this adc to start collecting data, we have to use the ad start bit in the control register. And the interrupt mode Look at the ADC file. In the interrupts, we are using the ADC1 IRQN. So I'm just gonna copy that so we can create our function. Void ADC1 IRQ handler, void. And inside this, we need to, I wanna put this into a variable because I wanna view this variable in the STM studio. So we'll create a volatile int, we'll call it ADC data, and over here we'll take the ADC data and assign it the ADC1 data register value. So whatever is in the data register, we'll see it in this variable. So we can monitor this variable in the STM Studio program. So let's go ahead and open up the S STM Studio. Well, first we need to build the file. Let's see if we have any errors in it. We have no errors. So we can go ahead and flash the microcontroller. So the microcontroller should be flashed. Now that we have the microcontroller flashed, we can go ahead and start the STM Studio. And the first thing we want to do is we want to import a variable into this location here. So we just you can press the right button, import, and at the ellipsis, just click on this. And you're going to want to go to your your username, co IDE, workspace, and find the project that you're you just built. In my case it's the ADC interrupts and click this one again. You want to go to the debug, the bin file, and you want to use the elf, the ELF file. And the elf file has all of the information that you need within the program that we just created. And the one we want is the ADC data. If you remember from the file, this is the variable that we created, the ADC data. Going back to the STM Studio, once you've selected this, you can click on the import and you'll see that it added it here and you can press close. And you also want to send this variable to the viewer. You can have many variables in this location and you can specify which ones you want to actually view at the time at a single time or at a moment in time. So you press the right button and you send to var viewer. You're not going to see anything right here because the potentiometer is probably a little bit too high of a value. But also we haven't we haven't started playing it yet. So I'm going to go ahead and put the lower value at 0, put the upper value at 5000 because I know it's going to be 4095 and that's going to change your vertical axis. You can go ahead and play it and you'll see that we have data at the, between the 2000, 2250 range. And if I go to the potentiometer and I start changing the potentiometer, you'll see that it also changes in the variable viewer, that particular variable. You can also look at it, 
not just as a curve, but you can look at it as a bar graph and as a table. So you just see the, the value here, which is what you would have seen in the LCD. So from now on in the tutorials that I'm going to show and the projects that I include in this tutorial series, we'll be using this resource to view the variables that we put into the programs. This resource will be indispensable when we're working on new, new projects. We will be able to add quite a few variables to our programs and peer into how the program is performing as it runs on the chip itself. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you feel that this tutorial benefits you. And go ahead and, and also don't forget to check out the Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash newbiehack. Thank you for watching. I've given you a tiny bit of knowledge. Because I'm doing this for peanuts, you can show your support by clicking the like button. Go ahead. You can do it. Click it. Go ahead. And also by subscribing and clicking on the notifications. Oh look, I've made it to 1.1 million. Oh no, that's not me. Oh yeah, and go to my channel where you can find all of the playlists.